so first of all uh, greetings to all and uh, let me introduce briefly myself to you uh, my name is sudhanva purani um, i am working as a content developer for i get it wherein i am creating the uh, contents of software which is ptc creo i am creating uh, courses on different modules of ptc creo and uh, apart from that i am supporting our company uh, for conducting trainings on different cat softwares like catia creo nx and so on so in uh, today's session uh, i am covering basics of gdnt so in this i will uh, try to explain in very much brief four topics first one is the introduction of gdnt concept second is why and when to use the gdnt principles third is gdnt basics and uh, at the last i will show overview of this implementation of the gdnt concept using 3d cad model and uh, for that i will use the software ptc creo parametric 9.0 so let me just uh, share my screen Adwit, please let me know when you can see the screen yeah it's visible Leave. yeah so let me start uh, with this uh, powerpoint presentation so the topic of my session is basics of gdnt using the asme y14.5 dash 2009 and 2018 standards so let us first understand the introduction of gdnt concept so as we know the full form gdnt is geometric dimensioning and tolerancy so basically it's a standardized method uh, which is used to communicate information about any product and uh, the information is being conveyed in the line of process of product design right from design to manufacturing and to the metrology or inspection department and uh, so that's why definitely gdnt is an essential skill in the manufacturing industry why because a designer designs some parts or components and uh, the theoretical design has to be manufactured in reality so here we take the help of manufacturing uh, people uh, they are supposed to understand the design intent from the designer and finally when they manufacture then the inspectors from the metrology department they need to check the manufactured component as per the design specification or design intent of the designer so this chain which is uh, design make and measure in this chain these three people they should be uh, they should have a perfect understanding about the product what is to be manufactured and how it is to be inspected that should be clear to all of them uh, so there is a need that designer should communicate his design intent well to the remaining two people but often what happens in the industry the gdnt uh, even though it's a essential skill but that is misunderstood or misused or ignored so uh, this happens because definitely the people from these three departments they may not have a complete understanding of the concept so uh, that's why uh, uh, the courses like what we i, I, I will uh, speak about that courses come into play which will teach the people the concepts of gdnt so as i said uh, there is a definite need of effective means of communication between these three people designers manufacturers and inspectors from the metrology department so let's move to the next slide uh, now in next slide i am uh, trying to explain the rules of reality so what happens we know that we design the components in the cad environment in the cad world wherein the cad model is nothing but a mathematical model based on the dimensions and uh, the topologies and so on so if we look at any glass so the uh, this image is the cad glass so the glass is the means this these three balls they are made up of uh, glass and uh, that kind of material specification we have provided over there in the cad model so this looks completely perfect in the world of cad a mathematically perfect model but if you look at the real glass under microscope the surface looks like this a wavy or rough surface under microscope so definitely cad world is perfect but the reality is not perfect that is the first rule of reality and why it happens because the materials they have rough surfaces for example 
if we have some uh, parts manufactured by using metal casting process. So due to the uh, the method of manufacturing the metal casting, definitely the output will be rough surfaces and uh, the, the surfaces they may not have exact perpendicular, exact horizontal, exact vertical uh, means the geometry will not be perfect what we defined in CAD and also the dimensions they, they will also uh, slightly vary due to the shrinkage allowance of the metal. So that is first point materials have rough surfaces. Secondly, geometrical shapes vary from the math equations that define them. So for example, let me just uh, show it over here. So in the uh, in this CAD model in PTC Creo. I think. Uh, yeah, so if we look at this model and this is the cylindrical shape. So this cylindrical shape is exactly perfect over here in the CAD world. But when this will be manufactured in reality, the cylinder, uh, the axis of cylinder can somewhat tilt, then the perfect roundness will not be achieved. It it may be somewhat oval. So that kind of a uh, change or the variation will happen for the geometric shape from the math equation in the reality. And as a third point, uh, if we have some specific points in the uh, model in the CAD, so those points they can take up more than a single dimension. So these are the rules of reality and those should be taken into account while communicating the uh, CAD design to the manufacturing people. So that's why designers designs must be made with some kinds of tolerances so that manufacturers and inspector know how far from the perfect and in what way a part can deviate. So as I said, uh, like uh, this model, this uh, is a casting. It will be made by using metal casting process. So the dimensions, whatever I have given in the CAD model, those will not be exactly achieved in the real world. So that's why I should give some tolerance. Uh, within that range of tolerance, uh, the manufactured part will be accepted by the uh, designer and the inspectors that should be given because we know that there are metal shrinkage allowances. Then if it is a sand casting, then sand molds, they may have uh, rough surfaces. So if I want this surface exactly flat, but the sand molding that won't give this exactly uh, flat and smooth surface, there should be some uh, waviness, some roughness likewise. So to take into consideration such things, we should definitely give some tolerances based on the dimensions of the uh, parts along with the uh, geometrical conditions as well. So uh, that's why if we don't give any tolerance, then a part is nothing but a theoretical idea that can never be made. So this uh, all info is given by the first rule of reality. That is reality is not perfect. Then as the second rule of reality, what it says that trying to get to perfect has exponentially increasing cost. So definitely if we look at this graph over here on the X axis, there is the uh, tolerances. They are being applied. They are being increased from left to right. And on the Y axis there, are, there is a percentage increase in the cost. So as we are moving from 0 0.03, then 0 0.015, obviously plus minus values uh, to towards up to the 0 0.01 plus minus 0 0.001. Uh, plus minus value, there is a fair increase in the uh, manufacturing cost up to the 100%. But after this, when we try to uh, uh, miss the tolerance values are being decreased here, we are going uh, miss here. We are going trying to go as much possible as to the perfection. Uh, so when we try to go towards perfection, then the cost of manufacturing will increase exponentially. And that's why we should consider that do we need this much perfection? The parts which I will create, which I will manufacture, if they are trying to fit in, into one another, then do I really need such kind of perfection? And if I really need, then I can go. But otherwise, uh, trying to go to perfect has exponentially increasing cost. That is understood by the graph over here. So that's why we should carefully uh, think about what tolerance we should give to the component what manufacturing process we should use so that the component will be created within a 
acceptable range of cost. Otherwise, the cost of manufacturing, if it goes too much high, then uh, that solution is not feasible uh, financially. So now let us move to the third rule of reality. That is uh, the same point what I was talking earlier, that the most expensive part of making th things is actually making them. So uh, if you look at this graph, there are uh, five processes in the design of the uh, component. First one is a concept architecture. Definitely the uh, conceptual uh, drawings, what we do on paper and so on. Then after conceptual drawings, we can uh, create some clay models to understand the uh, surfaces of that model, what we do in automotive industry likewise. So after those uh, kind of modeling, then we can go to actual design in the CAD world. After designing, we can go for testing. So testing can be done in the CAD world also, like we, we can do uh, kinematic dynamic simulations or we can uh, do the FEA simulations for the structure and thermal analysis and so on. Uh, so after that, we should do the process planning. So these all things right from conceptual architecture, design, testing and process planning, they are having a low incurred cost. But after that, if we uh, not spend much money into these uh, four things, then it may happen that cost of production will increase much. Why? Because we haven't spent much time and money while dealing with the first four processes. So in this case, it may happen that whatever uh, part we have designed by using the first four processes and after manufacturing, it may happen that the component will not meet the functional requirement. The component will be a wastage that will happen. So that, that is not a good thing. We should avoid the remaking of parts. We should avoid the uh, good parts uh, that can be rejected that we should avoid. And also we should uh, not accept the bad parts. And that's why we should uh, uh, we should try to cover most of our efforts and cost into the first four phases of design, conceptual architecture, design, testing and process planning so that uh, the cost even though they increase, but uh, after that when we go actually for production, then the incurred cost is less. So uh, that's why that is the committed cost and that should be done so that uh, we have to design uh, means the design should be done only at once. Uh, there should not be any redesign. Uh, there should, should, not, should not be any remaking of parts. So that is about the third rule of reality that the most expensive part of making things is actually making them. Uh, then let us come to the uh, fourth rule of reality. That is the waste is expensive. So we know that if we create some part, if we design some part after, after that we manufacture it and if it doesn't make the uh, if, if, if it doesn't meet the uh, requirement of functionality, then the, the part is wasted. Not only the part, but it it is uh, wasting the time what we spend into into design then the attention what we spent in design and manufacturing that is also wasted and the raw material that is wasted obviously the money is also wasted so time and attention wasted while trying to communicate design intent that not only uh, uh, that only not waste the cost in the all salary and hours wasted but apart from that it will prevent the time from being used to design and make new products so what happens if we uh, design and uh, after that the manufactured part is having failure and then we will have to redesign and remanufacture. So in that uh, in that case, the more time it's spent due to that time, uh, the more time that, that is spent for the rework that could have been used for the designing and making of new products. So we are wasting that time that should not happen definitely. So after considering these uh, four rules of reality, we should understand the importance of concept of GDNT and why we require it. So basically GDNT is nothing but a universal language and uh, due to that what happens all the engineers across the globe, they can communicate with one another. They can communicate their true design intent based on the tolerances, uh, then based on the, uh, the geometric tolerances of size, fit and so on then uh, since they are allowing maximum tolerance due to that the cost which is uh, the cost which is incurred in the manufacturing that can be kept in a lower limit 
and due to the gdnt since it is a symbolic language based out of symbols and numbers so uh, this is well used to uh, give the instructions to the manufacturing team and to the team of inspectors as well so uh, here we are not using any real life language like english or any other german and so on instead of that we are using the language of symbols and numbers that is understandable to everyone so then next thing comes next slide about why and when used to uh, why and when to use the gdnt concept so let us first look at the uh, aspect of why to use this concept so why to use because it will create uh, the most possible or greatest possible tolerances into all the manufactured parts then due to that it will save the most amount of money it will prevent the most amount of waste in terms of time money and uh, raw material and it, it it will clearly communicate the design intent right from designer to manufacturer to inspector and that will all happen through a standardized method so that is the uh, benefit of gdnt and that is the answer to why to use gdnt now next slide is about when to use gdnt so there are two aspects first one is when you have parts that you want to be in these four things if your part you want to make interchangeable so for example uh, whenever we use our car say for example in our car uh, some accident happens and we are uh, we are losing our rear view mirror on the left hand side so we go to workshop and we try to replace that so the replacing happens very quickly easily because the other rear view mirror what we are getting from the workshop that has been designed and manufactured in such a way that it is interchangeable so it will fit exactly where wherever needed and the interchangeability happens well uh, that is first thing then the parts what i want to design uh, that should be meeting with other parts we know that in any a sort of industry automotive ihm aerospace in any industry uh, we are having different assemblies into the main mach uh, machine component so uh, to assemble the parts they should be meeting with one another and the meeting should happen well due to the application of gdnt principles and due to the gdnt, GDNT principles the parts will be made uh, in a the the specified limits of tolerances we can achieve the mass manufacturing and all the parts they will function as intended that will happen due to the application of gdnt and also the parts they can be inspected functionally uh, by the respective teams of inspectors and uh, actual uh, shop floor assembly people so that all we can achieve by using gdnt and the other aspect when you want to gdnt uh, when, when you want to use gdnt that is nothing but uh, it's a uh, it's a language which is universal for all engineers and due to that it will breach the language and cultural barriers so nowadays we know that uh, for our example uh, for our company we are having a customer jaguar and land rover they are in uk so when they need to communicate their designs to here in india or to any other vendors and customers across the globe they can definitely communicate their design intent by the use of universal language of gdnt which is symbol based so there is no any barrier in terms of language or culture and third thing uh, we should be sure that our design intent is legally enforceable in the contract disputes so for example if we say that uh, if i uh, if i design a part then if i create a drawing of that part and then in the drawing if i write that interpret the drawing by using asme uh standard y14.5-2009 so if i write like that in my drawing then there are set of set of rules which are uh, the set of rules they are uh, uh, the rules are there in the asme standard and all the people uh, who will refer to that drawing they have to abide by those rules that will happen and due to which there will not be any legal issues during the contract disputes that is again Uh, answer to when to use gdnt and uh, now let us come to the gdnt basics where let us first look at the definition of gdnt so gdnt is a mathematical and symbol based language that i spoke already so this symbol based language that lets you specify tolerance of a real product in relation to a 
theoretical mathematically perfect product so as i have shown you my cad model that's my mathematically perfect model in creo and if i want to manufacture that uh, product in the real life then there has to be some variation so uh, the variation of a real product as compared to my cad model that we can uh, strongly communicate to different people by using the mathematical and symbol based language of gdnt and that's why there are three uh, key elements of the terminology for gdnt first one is datums second one is implied rules and third one is material condition modifiers so let us look at them one by one first one is a datum so datums are nothing but the theoretical perfect geometrical elements of a part and they are the mathematically perfect product to which all allowable tolerances are compared so let us look at this in the cad model about the definition of datums so here uh, for that model which i have shown to you this is the drawing of it and here i want to specify the position of this hole and along with the position of this hole the three remaining holes which are of same dimension same diameter of 30 so the tolerance of position means the location of the center of this hole the central axis that i want to define so for that for the definition of that uh, center i need some uh, perfect references so what i say that this part the bottom surface is said to be a datum which means that if we look at this part so this part will be rested onto some surface so the bottom surface of this part will rest onto some flat surface and by keeping on that bottom surface i can drill the four holes that's my that's why my first reference for the drilling can be said to be the a datum that is the bottom surface that is the resting reference then for the location of this hole this hole is at a distance of 190 from the center 190 mm and also it is at an angle of 45 degrees from the horizontal reference or from this horizontal surface that's why since it is a reference from the horizontal surface it has to be a perfectly horizontal surface that's why i'm saying it as a datum b so and similarly the, the second one uh, the surface of this vertical rib this surface also this surface uh, both of them i'm saying as datum c so what will the manufacturer do in the real life while manufacturing even though he is manufacturing this part by using uh, casting metal casting but after casting he will try to machine the bottom surface so the bottom surface will be machined and that will be made as flat as possible and exactly horizontal uh, so that the resting will happen like this very well exactly horizontal resting will be done then since this is my b datum which is uh, which can be seen in the front view sorry uh, in the top view this will be my b datum so that is exactly horizontal so after casting process the manufacturer will try to make this flat and horizontal as much as possible so that this can be said as one datum reference the b datum and same thing will be done for this surface and b datum will be this surface plus this uh, surfaces of both the ribs horizontally and for both the ribs vertically that will be the datum references uh, done for the location of the hole so that after resting on the a datum and after referring to the b and c datum the drilling can happen for the hole not only for this hole but for the uh, remaining three holes that is about the datum uh, and datums are single geometric elements they can be points lines or planes so here we have seen the example of a plane here as we are looking at this uh, flat surface on the bottom that can be said as a plane that is a datum reference and uh, that's why datums provide unalterable reference points to the tolerance zone and they anchor tolerance zones to a mathematically perfect model so that's why if we interpret this drawing now that by referring to the datum a b and c 
the position or the location of the axis of this hole uh, that can vary inside a diametric torrent zone of 0.5 millimeter diameter. Uh, so this is the torrent of position. Along with that, the 30 is diameter of that hole and it is having a plus minus torrent zone of 0.2. This is the torrent of size. So that's why the hole can be 30.2 millimeter diameter or it can be 29.8 millimeter diameter. And what I say that uh, this tolerance of 0.5 millimeter diametric tolerance that is applicable at the maximum material condition. So that is more applicable at the diameter value of 30.2 millimeters. That is the understanding out of this uh, GDNT symbol. So uh, this we spoke about the datums. Now let us speak about other key element, element of the JDNT that is nothing but implied rules. So as I said earlier on the drawing, we can mention the interpret drawing according to some standard ASME. The two standards I have mentioned over here. So due to these two uh, notes, we can add legally enforceable rules to the drawing. So uh, for example, like in the ASME 14.5 2009 standard, there is one rule of 90 degrees, which means that an implied 90 degree angle shall apply where no angle is specified. Uh, the other rule can be all dimensions and tolerances. They apply at 20 degrees centigrade or 68 degrees Fahrenheit. These things are uh, taken for granted while applying the ASME standards. So what this rule of uh, 90 degrees will say, if we look at this drawing the other sheet so this is a square plate and this edge and this edge there is no angle mentioned so in such cases the implied rule will come into action that there has to be angle of 90 degrees in in between these two edges that will be the implied rule um yeah so this was all about the basic concepts of GDNT. How do we deal with um, datums? I have told you. I have also uh, explained about the implied rules. And third thing, that is nothing but the material condition modifiers that I, I have also spoke over here in the first sheet that this is the maximum material condition modifier. Apart from that, the rib, uh, this surface of rib and this surface of rib, that is nothing but the P datum. But the opposite surfaces, they can have some tolerance. And since they are parallel to these P datum surfaces, so we can give a tolerance of parallelism. Then here, this rib is having 30 mm thickness, and that is again having a size tolerance of plus minus 0.1. But it is still having a position tolerance of 0.2 mm with respect to ABC datums. That means that at the center of this rib, the center is at this distance from the whole center. So at the center of that rib, there will be a there will be two parallel planes imaginary. They will be uh, located centrally about that center plane, uh, symmetrically about a distance of 0.2 uh, mm. And then uh, these two planes, uh, they are said to be the zone into which the center of the rib will fall. That way we can uh, interpret this symbol of uh, symmetric tolerance for that. So this is a very brief about this. Uh, so and uh, to understand these things in detail uh, in our I get it, we are having some detailed courses. So there is a GDNT functional concept. Uh, sorry, foundational concepts. That is the course which will explain everything about the ASME standards. So if you look at this course, then you can see clearly that the concepts which I have shown you by using the presentation, they are nothing but from the these chapters. And then after uh, showing the basics of GDNT, there are GDNT vocabulary, uh, GDNT vocab, then the, the GDNT learning symbols, datum selection, meanings of symbols, Material condition modifiers and the GDNT 2018 revision. So all these things are explained in detail, and the the course is in the form of videos. 
So this is a complete theoretical course about GTNT concept, and that is very useful for you people. So I request you that you please uh, visit our I get it website and try to uh, purchase this course. And uh, one more thing that the tolerances they are applied. I have shown them in a 2D drawing, but nowadays many companies are now moving to concept that is called as MBD model based definition, wherein all the drawing information we show in terms of a 3D CAD model. So here you can see that the, the combined step uh, combined state here named as 3D model. I can look at the plane model, uh, but I can show a data block uh, that we show in the drawing or we can show some properties like material and weight and some notes. Then if you look, if you look at this datums. Uh, combined state, the tolerances which I have shown you in the 2D drawing, those are all mentioned in the 3D model like A datum, then B datum and the other one C datum and the tolerances which are mentioned over there in the drawing. And here is also a section view shown. So let me just uh, show this section. Yeah, so in the section view, I am showing that the top surface of the model is nothing but E surface E datum reference. And from that, uh, this surface of the second hole that is having a tolerance of parallelism and the vertical uh, surfaces of the cylindrical holes, they are having a tolerance of cylindricity. So that way, the drawing information, what we show in 2D drawing, that can be shown in a 3D drawing, uh, sorry, 3D part. So that's why, apart from the GDNT foundational concept course, we are having some other courses uh, which will deal with the concept of MBD model based definition. So they are available in different softwares like CATIA, FTA. Function tolerancing annotation or inventor MBD or SOLIDWORKS MBD or uh, NX PMI and Creo MBD. So, in all CAD softwares, we are having these courses for MBD application of 3D annotations. Plus, we are having the course on GDNT concepts of foundational concepts. So, I request you that please go to our iGrid page and try to purchase our courses and also please subscribe to our. I get it learning for engineers YouTube page so that you will get updates about different tech tips and webinar videos. Yeah, so everyone, thank you for attending my session. Thanks a lot.